Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do problem number 158. Problem, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it, shall we? It says we have four people A, B, C, and D. We are told that A, B, C, and D have a total of $160 among them. Not $160 each, but $160 total altogether. We are further told that A has three times as much as D, and B happens to have five times as much as C. Furthermore, we are told that B and C together. It should say have, not has. B and C have, not has. B and C together have ninety dollars more than A. How much does each person has? How much does each has? There are four unknown, as you can see clearly: A, B, C, and D. Even though A, B, C, and D are used here as people's name. We're going to use the same variable to represent the amount of money that each person has. A is going to represent the amount of money that A has, and B is represent the amount of money B has, and so on and so forth. Same variable as their as their initial as their names. Therefore, we have four unknown here: A, B, C, and D. We need four independent equations for us to be able to solve for each of these variables. The question is, where are the four equations buried in here? Let's take a look at it, shall we? The well, first thing we know that A, B, C, and D have a total of one hundred sixty dollars among them. That's our first equation. A, B, C, and D have a total of one hundred sixty dollars. That's our first equation. Furthermore, they tell us that A has three times as much as D. So there we go. A amount of money that A has is three times as much as D. This is our second equation. Then they go on to tell us that B has. Five times as much as C. So B has five times as much as C. Whatever the amount of money that C has, we multiply that by five. That's how much B has. Let's substitute these in here. So A equals three times D. A equals three times D. B equals five times C. And then C, of course, is C. And then finally we have D. So now we have. An equation with only two variables, c and d. Let's combine them together. 3d and 1d. That's 4d plus 5c and 1c is 6c equals 160. Since 160 is a even number, 6 is a even number, 4 is a even number. Let's divide this entire equation by 2 to make it simpler. So we end up with 2d plus 3c equals 80. That's our first equation. So far, we have worked on three equations. I should have finished reading the question first before before we started solving it. I did not finish reading the uh, the whole question. The last part that we have to read is this part right here. We are told that B and C together, B and C together have ninety dollars more than A does. That's our last equation. So the amount of money that B and C have together, that money happens to be equal to the amount of money that A has. Is that what that says? Does it say that B and C together have the same amount of money as A does? No, it does not. It says B and C together have ninety dollars more than the amount of money that A has. Whatever the amount of money that A has, if you were to add ninety to that amount, if you were to add ninety to that amount, that's how much B and C have. B and C together have ninety dollars more than A does. Again, we can make the same substitution and bring the equation to to C and D. Let's do it very quickly. So A equals three times D plus ninety. C is going to remain C, and B equals five times C. I'm not sure where we're going to end up with this. Well, we'll find out. So that gives us six C. Six C equals three D plus ninety. Let's bring the three to this side. So we end up with six C minus three D equals ninety. We have six. We have three. We have ninety. They are all multiple of three. Let's divide this entire equation by. Well, actually, now that I think about it, if we were to divide the entire equation by three, we'll end up with two c here. We have a three c here, and if we end up with a d here, we have two d here. That's not going to do the job. 
Why don't we leave this equation the way it is? Listen to me. Why don't we leave this equation the way it is? Leave this equation the way it is. Multiply this equation by 2, which was right here. Oh, blast it. We should have just stopped here. Now that, now that we see, see we have 6c here and 6c there. We can subtract one equation from the other and we can get rid of the 6c. 6c and 6c. So let's erase this step that we just did. It would be better to just leave it like this. So that's it. So with this, we have this equation 4d plus 6c equals 160 and we have another equation here which says 6c, which we're going to put here, 6c minus 3d minus 3d equals 90. And let's see what it, 90 has a positive sign in front of it. Let's see what it takes us. Keep in mind that this is negative, negative 3d. Let's put it a little bit higher, negative 3d. Okay, watch what happens. Now, if we to subtract this equation right here, this equation right here, which we wrote here, from that equation, if we were to subtract it, what's going to happen? Since we are subtracting it, this negative that you have in front of 3d will become positive, this positive that we have in front of 6d will become negative, and this positive that we in front of 90 will become negative, obviously. So now we have positive 6d and a negative 6d, they're going to kill each other, and we're left with just d, 4d plus 3d is 7d equals 160 or if you don't like it, writing it way over here, equals 160 minus 90. What do you know? 160 minus 90 happens to be a nice 70. Nice 70. 70. 70 equals 70. 7D equals 70. That implies that D must be equal to 10. Once we know D, we can figure out the C by using either this equation or that equation. It doesn't really matter. Let's use this equation right here. So we have 6c, 6c equals 90. Bring this negative 3 to this side, becomes positive 3d, but d we know is 10. So 90 plus 30 is 120. 120 equals 6c. 120 equals 6c. Divide both sides by 6. Even though, even though, we're not interested in dealing with this middle part, but to make it technically correct, to make it mathematically correct, I had to put a 6 at the bottom here, because otherwise we cannot claim that this quantity is equal to that quantity and that in turn is equal to this. We have to put 6 underneath everything. And this equal sign, I'm going to bring it down a little bit. There you go. So 6 are going to cancel out, and C by itself is going to equal 120 divided by 6, which is just 20. Which is just 20 which is equal to C. Well, we're making progress. And D, we found out, was 10. Now we can work on A and B. A is 3 times D. D is 10. So A is going to be 3 times 10, which is going to be 30. And B is 5 times C. C is 20. So it's going to be 5 times 20, which is 100. The last thing we need to do at this point, the last thing we need to do at this point, is to very quickly verify our answer very quickly verify our answer make sure that they did make sure that they do in fact add up to 160 so we're going to do that right now i'm not going to rewrite everything just follow me here so a is 30 a is 30 b we are claiming is 100 b we are claiming is 100 b is 100 a is 30 and b is 100 30 plus 100 is 130 we have a total of 60 which means we need 30 more and that makes sense because D happens to be 10 and C happens to be 20. 20 plus 10 is going to give us our other 30. 30 plus 30 is 60. 60 plus 100 is 160, which means our answer is in fact correct. I know.